been preserved in the Library of Congress. The Arabic language autobiography spent decades in private collections before the library acquired it in 2017. Now it has been digitized for the world to read. And Amna Nawaz reports on the manuscript's remarkable journey for our ongoing arts and culture series, Canvas. Born and raised in West Africa, Omar Ibn Said was 37 years old when he was kidnapped and taken to America as a slave in the 1800s. Before I came to the Christian country, my religion was the religion of Muhammad. His autobiography in his native language of Arabic is believed to be the only one of its kind, the original words of a Muslim American slave. Then there came to our place a large army who killed many men and took me and brought me to the great sea. His literacy and culture uh, completely goes against, abolishes, the one might say annihilates the, the narrative that slaves were not capable of culture. In fact, they were persons with, uh, with distinct histories, abilities, culture, and background. Allah al Rais has studied and translated the words of Omar ibn Said. They sold me into the hands of the Christians who bound me and sent me on board a great ship and we sailed upon the great sea a month and a half when we came to a place called Charleston. He was wealthy and he was highly educated because in his autobiography he speaks about spending 25 years studying. Mary Jane Deeb is the chief of the African and Middle East Division at the Library of Congress, where Ibn Said's manuscript now lives. So there was a man who was caught at the age of 37 you know, and shipped off to South Carolina in a country he doesn't know, among people whose language he doesn't know. Ibn Said wrote he was sold to a, quote, small, weak, and wicked man called Johnson. After years of abuse, he fled, but was caught in North Carolina. He is then captured and brought to a jail cell, and he begins to write on the walls of his uh, jail cell in Arabic. So that attracted attention of pretty important people because the man who ends up uh, buying him and releasing him from jail was the brother of the uh, governor of North Carolina. Over time, Ibn Said converted to Christianity. In his 60s, he wrote his own story, but only in Arabic. It's written in Arabic, and so uh, his masters could not really uh, read it at all. They could not really influence its writing. And so it was really his exact words, unfiltered by the machinery of the editorship of uh, masters and, uh, and abolitionists, as other slave narratives were. A machinery, al Raiz says, erased countless narratives, including the fact that up to 20% of Africans enslaved in America were Muslim. Ibn Zaid, in fact, chose to open his autobiography with a verse from the Quran. The crux of this uh, Quranic chapter is that it's only God who has the possession and the ownership, both of human beings and of things. And therefore, it seems to me a kind of a hidden text. What Omar is saying is that you guys have no right to own here. It's a narrative that challenges the original concept of who the slaves were when they came here. They didn't really have a system of belief. They were uncultured. They didn't have a written system. This is what he brings to the table and basically says that is who we really are. But before those pages written by Omar ibn Said could be shared with the rest of the world, Conservators here at the Library of Congress worked for months behind the scenes to bring those pages back to life. We're trying to present the item as close to what uh, it looked like at the time as possible. Sylvia Albro led the effort to rescue the nearly 200-year-old manuscript. The materials themselves, she says, tell us even more about the life of Omar ibn Said. It's actually surprising that the quality of paper for his manuscript is really pretty good. The fact that he had at his disposal good quality materials is an indication of the respect that he had as a figure, even as a slave. That respect brought Ibn Said to the attention of prominent abolitionists, missionaries, and linguists at the time, who translated his story and used it in their fight against slavery. The entire manuscript is now available online for a new generation to read Ibn Said's words for themselves. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Amna Nawaz in Washington, D.C. And what a gift it is to all of us.